You are watching Eternal Warrior on MTGO Academy featuring Rex Start. Hey everybody, it's Chris, MTGO's Rex Start, and I'm going to give you the, um, the the deck tech here, the video deck tech for the uh, Blue White Spirits deck that's in uh, today's video. Um, <clears throat> basically, I, I think it was the last article or the article before I was talking about um, wanting to uh, build decks um, where I can exploit Cavern of Souls other than the Humans deck. Of course, you can do it just incidentally or to resolve sort of a key combo creature, or you can do it when you have kind of a heavy tribal theme. And so I thought, well, um, one of the tribes that stuck out is having um, a decent number of uh, hate bears and, and other things that would be great to resolve through counter magic was um, uh, spirits. So sort of the idea is to build it around Spirit of the Labyrinth, which I think is really good against a lot of the blue decks in the format. Um, and as long as everybody just seems to want to keep countering things and drawing cards, this is a <laughs> nice guy to have out here. Um, cast off a Cavern of Souls and shut down all their draw spells. Um, uh, Cami of Ancient Law um, is uh, for Oath, because otherwise Oath would be pretty miserable um, for me since I am playing a ton of creatures here. And I don't have a lot of stuff to deal with Oath in the main deck, um, so that would be it. Um, post board I can bring in spell snares um, I guess I have this vindicate over here we can get to that but um, so, so that was kind of key um, and then Kataki for the um, uh, workshop matchups um, very good there um, and also fine against some of the other artifact heavy strategies I wouldn't necessarily leave it in against all of them but um, I would leave it in I, again, I just wanted to have it um, in the main deck and then I've got a Another one on the board. Um, because I'm playing Spirit of the Labyrinth, that kind of affects the um, the uh, card drawing that I am playing. Ancestral is too good not to play, um, even with that, but um, sort of in lieu of, and I know it's look a little janky, I'm playing Portent um, instead of uh, Ponder. Um, you don't draw the card right away, um, but uh, you do draw it uh, at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep, uh, which um, plays around spirit, your own Spirit of the Labyrinth. So if it's counter magic or something you could play at instant speed, it probably doesn't really matter that you're not drawing until the next turn is upkeep. This is not a perfect solution. Um, I think there are things, like, like I thought about strategic planning, there are a lot of things that put the card into your hand um, instead of draw it. Um, that's what you're looking for. Uh, but in this case, um, just drawing it the next turn's upkeep played around this. So kind of interesting way to make use of the old Ice Age cantrips. Um, Mystical Tutor, pretty obvious, just to have a little utility access to my Swords to Plowshares and some of my Haymaker spells. Um, moving up the scale here, um, Geist of St. Traft, which I probably will cut this down to three, um, but uh, right now it, it plays a little awkwardly with like Black Lotus and stuff. You don't necessarily have this mana curve isn't conducive to like a bonkers Black Lotus hand if you have a Geist in hand because there aren't a lot of one drops. Um, but I like it. Um, one of the reasons I really like this idea is um, having Kira here because the uh, hate bears that you do have, stuff like Spirit and Eidolon Rhetoric, for instance, um, Kitaki, um, they're all creatures that um, Kira can uh, make them resistant to removal. Um, now, unfortunately, it does not work um, around Abrupt Decay because Abrupt Decay cannot be countered, and this does say counter that spell or ability. But um, anything else, any other kind of removal, um, and these guys have vulnerability. This one is an enchantment, for instance. Um, you know, anything else that the opponent might be bringing to bear against your guys, um, Kira gives you some resistance to. So if you can stick and land one of these things and land a Kira that protects it, uh, as opposed to just having some enchantment or something out there uh, doing the work for you that they could just nature's claim or whatever. Um, so it was just something interesting I thought was worth trying, um, especially since it's it's in the tribe here. Um, and it's reasonable just to have a 2-2 flyer sometimes. Unfortunately, it doesn't fight too well against like Trigon Predators or whatever. But you could trade with the Delver. Um, Factor Fiction is sort of the key draw spell here um, since it does not draw cards. It uh, You just put them into your hand. Um, since I do have a little mini reanimation package in here too, um, binning the other ones into the graveyard um, is nice. Um, Gifts Ungiven, I decided to try this out, um, to port this over from modern to vintage, so to speak. Um, and we, we, we do have um, a lot more mana here. Four, four mana is not unreasonable. Um, 
and unfortunately Gifts Ungiven is restricted in Vintage, um, so I can only play the one. I thought about trying to play Intuition, but I, I would have to play like Faithless Looting or something like that to prevent him from just stuffing the Norn in my hand. But I think Intuition might still be good because the way I have this built, um, there are a lot of my hate bears are in threes, so I could always Intuition for whatever I needed and find it. I don't know, it's something to think about. Um, uh, so then I've got the Elish Norn Unburial Rites thing, which is here. Because I noticed I had a lot of little guys that um, I thought if, if I was playing against an opposing creature deck, could have a little bit of trouble uh, breaking through, especially the blue-red Pyromancer thing, which you'll see um, in the videos um, that I run into. And while I have some game against it, I think I probably needed to have more game uh, against that matchup. And this was kind of what I was thinking I might be able to do against them. Um, almost got to uh, hard cast this uh, not totally out of the question um, playing four force of wills it's interesting because I'm basically kind of playing a hate bears style deck but I've still since I'm playing blue I can still play force of will um, so I give up a little bit of the oomph that some of the green based ones would have um, but I get to play force of will and, and counter magic as well so um, that's sort of the trade-off that that you're making with playing a sort of blue based um, deck like this um, the sideboard um, right now I wanted to make sure that against the decks a lot of the decks if they're not playing oath this is going to be pretty dead um, and this is only really in there for workshops so I wanted to have uh, enough cards to board in if I brought out as many as all of those um, so I've got some counter magic here um, I've got stony silence against some of the blue um, control decks I'm just going to use um, Fault key, for instance. Um, I got the fourth copies of these guys here. Um, if I need them, another idol on a vindicate just kind of is a, a catch-all um, since it's I, I did touch black enough for this uh, demonic tutor, and in case I had to hard cast an unburial rights for some reason. Um, and um, windborn muse is in the tribe. I did think it might be worth trying. Um, the fact that it's uncounterable off of Cavernous Souls on Spirit is not really relevant against like Dredge, where it, it would be fine against Dredge, but of course I've got to, you know, get to the point where I can cast it, which is going to require some artifact mana, that's for sure. Um, but I thought it would be good against the uh, blue-red um, uh, decks with the elemental tokens, so um, something I wanted to just try out, kind of in the experimental stage here. Um, and then just a smattering of uh, graveyard um, hate there. Um, not a ton of it, um, because I don't see a lot of dredge in the two-man queues. I think, you know, if, if I was running this in a daily event, I think I would want to do something else. But everyone seems to just want to play their blue decks in there. So, um, anyways, so so that's that's the deck. Like I said, it was kind of the idea was just to take um, some of these um, powerful spirits and then sort of build out from there. Um, and what most of the card choices are sort of trying to, to try, it's basically trying to be a Spirit of the Labyrinth deck. Um, how can I still, you know, get advantage and everything with having a Spirit of the Labyrinth out? So, um, obviously there are a bunch of other ways to do that. You play um, Green, White, Black with um, Dark Confidants, for instance. Um, but again, as, as far as having a tribal synergy and being able to play the Cavern of Souls, this is kind of what I wanted to give a shot. So, anyways, um, check out the videos, and um, I hope you enjoy them. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, again, this is really, really rough um, build, and I think there are a lot of things I could do to improve this. Um, so, any any ideas you guys have, especially on the mana curve or other ideas to kind of work around Spirit of the Labyrinth's uh, drawback, um, would be great. Thanks. If you'd like to purchase Magic Online cards with event tickets while logged in on Magic Online, look at MTGO Academy's selection by trading our official bot, Academy Cellbot. You can find it in the Magic Online trading area or at its your buddy list. Hey everybody, it's Chris, MTGO's Rex Start, and uh, we're playing a little of this blue-white uh, spirits deck. And <laughs> why do you have to be in my opening hand? Um, all right. Well, not sure what he's got. I don't have a force here, and this is kind of already a mulligan. Um, so, of course, I do have a portent. Um, yeah, let's see what I get on. Um, <laughs> interesting. Let's see, what could I do with this? Um, 
And I could cast the Kataki and Demonic Tutor probably for like Ancestral or something. Well, then I wouldn't have a blue. So I'd have to... Hmm... I think the safe play is to wait and see what he does and then... Um, so, ugh, God, what an ugly, ugly hand. All right, Mox Pearl resolves. Black Lotus resolves. Let's see, if I sack that for black, I could DT for, I could play anything, any of my two drops here, but I don't know what he has. So that's why I think it's best to wait and see what it is I would want to play, especially since Kataki is going to kind of hamstring me. All right, he's going to lead on a C and a Sapphire. And play Mystic Remora. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to work on my turn, even if I get a Spirited Labyrinth, so that's pretty good. Factor fiction, huh? Maybe I'll just factor fiction. <laughs> See if that resolves? I don't know. Um, God, because I need a... So so I can, like say, I could... He's going to be able to draw a card off of that and wait until he plays his upkeep. Or I could factor fiction now, let him draw that card, but at least I'm playing around... Um, him having, uh, see, or I could just, yeah, because the, the mana here is just too bad. Like, so I could, um, I think I want to go ahead and factor fiction. Or do I want to do it after he's paid? Now, he'll have to pay, so I'll wait for him to pay on his turn and then do it, I guess. Do it like on his upkeep after he's paid, I suppose. All right, he's going to pay. So he won't have mana drain up. Um, he could draw into a force of will here. That would be very bad for me. So he'll draw his card off the Remora. And unfortunately, he does have the Force of Will. So, uh, Force of Will exiling uh, Preordain. 
leaves me high and dry. Up oh, and unfortunately hitting his land drop. So I guess I could also have, what could I have done there? I could have, see I could have played the Kataki and DT'd, but what I would have DT'd for there, I have no idea. Well, they just need a land. <laughs> I see if that was a mock Sapphire, that would have been a whole lot of different there. Well, it was a mox jet. Um, let's see. <clears throat> yeah, unfortunately, I'm locking down both of my mana sources with this. Um, God, yeah, I got nothing here. Um, Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, main deck. Um, don't even know what I would DT for. I DT for the cami. <laughs> Try to counter that. I don't know. Um, this just seems terrible. Um, I just want to DT for like a blue spell. I can. <laughs> I don't know. This is just this is bad. I'm just gonna wait and see what he does. Oh, and does he have an ancestral recall here at a turn? Brainstorm, that's just about as bad. Yeah, I think the spirit of the labyrinthan that I mold would have been better. He's going to let that go. He's drawn enough cards off of that. And he's got an emerald here. Now he has Ancestral, of course. <laughs> All the drawn in the world. Mana Vault. So he's down to five cards, and we're going to see what he does here. He's going to go to second main. He doesn't want to try to... He has um, Hardcast Force up off of Mana Vault and the um, islands there. So there's a land. Um, <clears throat> so if I play the Kataki, I basically am just kind of locking myself down. Um, it also locks down um, a lot of his mana and gives me board pressure, but um, I think um, still have nothing to pitch to force. Well, I guess I could DT for. I gotta figure nothing's gonna resolve here. Like there's no way. Um, I could DT for it's next turn. I get like DT for cavern, but it's not that important that I resolve that um, in this matchup. Um, I guess I'll just run it out there and um, 
see what he does. Nice, gonna let that go. He's gonna abrupt decay it. Okay. He's passing turn. There's a Kira. <laughs> I don't know if that's helping me at all, but um, so I can try to resolve Kira, um, or I can hold Kira to have force. I can DT for um, it's like a DT for Cavernous Souls, which definitely would get. Uh, allow me to resolve my spells um, or I could DT but I'm not at enough mana for gifts here um, and I have a feeling demonic two are getting countered anyways um, I think we'll just go ahead and let that happen if it's gonna happen no that's gonna be good all right so can get um, and I say I can't cast gifts if I got it and get ancestral I think it's gonna get countered so I think I'm just gonna get cavern of souls um, let's see there's one Oh, what happened there? I don't know. Alright, well, I gotta assume at some point he's just gonna try to win. I don't know what his win con is, Jace or something maybe, but. Looks like some kind of bug control deck here. Um, a lot of card drawing. Um, There's a lotus from him. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's a time vault. What is he casting here? Yogmoth's will, huh? Well, I think we'll try to counter Yogmoth's will, but he's left up uh, Mana Drain here, so not super enthused about that, but um, we're going to have to go for it. And of course he does mana drain here. So he will have one, two, three, four blue left. So he'll be able to ancestral ponder everything he wants. Hunting for that uh, Baltea key. Replays a fetch land, fetches, ancestrals here.
this one basically all over but the shouting with the resolution of that yog will. And I'm thinking gush here. We really have to drag this out. No, I'm gonna concede. Um, so let's see. What do we want against this guy? Um, well, we I don't. He's got green, so I'm gonna think that he probably has oath in there. Um, not really sure, but um, I don't think the Katakis are what I really want there against him. Um, so I'm gonna run those out. Um, I don't think I need the Elish Norn package here either. Um, so we're gonna throw in the additional counter magic and the additional Kami. Um, let's see, maybe I'm gonna make room for some stony silence against him as well. I think Eidolon is fine against him. Um, Let's see, I'm going to cut something for um, Stony Silence. No, well, I, I don't know if I need Swords to Plowshares. Well, you could have, I mean, you could have Tinkerbot. Um, that would be about it that I would need that for. And I guess that's worth leaving in to have that answer for it. Um, Yeah, I think I'll go with, um, I'll stick with that configuration. All right, let's see. This looks fine. I'll keep this. I'm gonna play the two spirits, I think, off of um, turn one, and then um, hold the cami because I want it to be uncounterable uh, in case he does have oath. Okay, spirit. Might count it Lotus. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be worth it to him if he, but um, if he has an ancestral recall, it would allow him to still cast that or brainstorm if he kept a hand that's heavy on that. Okay. All right. So, gonna, so white, white, white there, and white. And we'll pass the turn. So yeah, he he could um, he might have brought in nature's claims if he was anticipating all these enchantment. He didn't see Spirit of Labyrinth in game one. He could have probably guessed off of the cavern naming Spirit, but the only Spirit he actually saw, I think, was um, Kira. Mox Diamond. Interesting. All right. And the Mox Opal, all right.
Let's see, what does he cast in here? White, black. There's a time vault. <laughs> Don't have vault key in your opener. <laughs> He's got fast bond. All right. Oh, well, that's good. So I can use one of these um, to take care of the fast bond. Okay. Um, so see, I can kill it now, or I could wait until he would, because uh, he can't play cast a gush. Um, so I don't know if that's doing anything for him, unless all the cards in his hand are lands. Um, I suppose the safe thing to do would be to just kill it now, but the difference is I can get him in two terms of this damage, otherwise it's six. Well, the next one would still kill him. So... I'll go ahead and nuke the fast bond. And pass the turn. Might be a two turn clock, anyways, off of fetch lands. The problem is just that I'm in danger of him ripping a um, Voltaic key at any point here. To just win. <laughs> Spellstare not going to get her done now. Um, um, let's see. So if I play the Cami now, let's go ahead and attack. Could have um, Snapcaster or something just to trade with one. He could also have um, an Abrupt Decay. All right, so um, I can play this out so that it's lethal next turn, um, or I could hold it. The only fear would be that he kills it before I can use it to kill something relevant, which again would only be Oath. Now I have Spell Snare for Oath, and he only has two cards in hand, so it's very likely I could kill Oath. I mean, even if he played it, I think he would be dead before it would activate, um, most likely. Um, alternatively, he could be playing Massacre or something like that. Um, Toxic Deluge, I don't know, in which case I want to hold that back. But I think just giving him one draw step fewer is the smart thing to do here anyways. He's got a Mox Ruby. See, I'm hoping his hand is just um, draw spells. Although he certainly could have burned um, an Ancestral just to cycle on my turn or something like that. Alright, he scooped. So, we're going to game three. Um, now, I think that I definitely want the Stony Silences. Let me see. 
What am I going to cut? Um, I still haven't seen Oath, but God, I just... I mean, maybe he's not... He's, he's got Gush, a bunch of... Um, I'm just... I'm going to cut... It's one of those. Bring in a Stony Silence. And... Um, one of the Geists, maybe, for another... And I don't want to go much lighter on creatures than that. Um, it's already gone pretty light on creatures there. Um, yeah. Or do I want that more than I want a spell snare? Now, spell snare hits a lot of his stuff. Um, I want to need to keep my blue count up to. Bring in another. And I'm tempted to cut another one of those for the other stony silence. I'm going to be on the draw, so it's not going to be as good as it is. Um, let's go ahead and go with that. All right, so I had a really clunky <laughs> draw on game one, and then game two I had the. Uh, Black Lotus, um, six power on the board um, with the Spirit of the Labyrinths. All right. Okay. Um, I think this is okay. He could have a nut hand that just destroys this, but um, barring that, I can possibly resolve a Stony Silence and turn two to keep him off of some of his shenanigans. I also have Time Walk here. Um... I'll keep, but um, yeah, hit any of his um, nuttier uh, turn ones um, are just going to be it for me. All right, a multiple mox hand again here, and he's going to DT. Possibly just DT for Ancestral. I guess he's thinking about it. Um, but um, that would be a reasonable play, just rebuild your hand, dump a bunch of man out, I guess he's going to hold on to it though, whatever it was, maybe he was um, going for a tinker, also a possibility. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, um, let's see, the tundra, cast the portent. He's going to vamp tutor. Ha! <laughs> okay. I guess it's a good thing he uh, didn't uh, do that on his uh, main phase. Um, oh, now he's going to mental misstep there. All right. Well, I'm going to assume that he um, he's going to have uh, something nasty in store here. He's only got a couple cards left, but... Um, he has whatever he DT'd for, and then he has a vamp tutor here. Yeah, there comes Vault, and probably Key with the one left to cast it. And there it is. All right, so a um, lot of tutors on his part there, um, getting the win. So. If you'd like to exchange your Magic Online cards for event tickets while logged in on Magic Online, you can do so by trading MTGO Academy's official bot, Academy Bybot. You can find it in the Magic Online trading area or add it to your buddy list. Hey everyone, it's Chris, MTGO's Rex Start, and um, we're uh, battling again against this uh, same bug control player here. Um, 
I'm going to keep that one. This one definitely has some uh, some action. See if he's um, possibly playing a different deck this time around. Um, let's see, I can misstep the ponder or I can uh, make sure that my guy resolves by holding, well he's going to only force, so yeah, that's fine. Um, and cast, we're going to misstep the ponder. Why not? Oh, he says using a different deck this time <laughs> to break things up. So um, he's mixing it up, so maybe he's on some kind of um, pyromancer or something like that. Um, of the red blue, you don't know. Oh, another Geist, huh? Okay. Um, so let's see, I can't quite cast. Um, let's see, I could cast uh, Geist of St. Traff this turn, but I couldn't also cast Spirit. Fetch a Tundra, play the Lotus, and we'll just cast a Geist this turn with blue and then white there. That is one of the sort of janky things. I did a lot of test um, hands with this uh, deck, and Geist of St. Traff just doesn't um, play super well with um, some of your more um, busted uh, openings involving Lotus. Um, the mana curve, I think, needs a lot of work. I thought about adding um, some kind of one-drop creature. I just couldn't really find anything that I wanted that much. Um, If you uh, have any suggestions for kind of improving the mana curve, I would love to hear them. Take all the Black Lotus hands I can get, though. <laughs> uh, Mystical Tutor. All right, so he uh, mystical for ancestral. Well, I will be able to play Spirit of the Labyrinth and have Force of Will back up, so that is nice. Okay. I guess the alternative play there would have been to strip mine his only land, but I don't know if he's like holding back a mox or something. I don't necessarily see why he would be doing that, but... Uh, decks like mine would often run... Um, what was he? Is he ancestraling himself with the Spear of the Labyrinth out? Apparently he is. <laughs> well, um, <clears throat> that happens. 
Yeah, I mean, worst case, worst comes to worst, do it on my turn and cycle the thing away. Um, okay, he's going to scoop there. I guess he's... Um, it was mana screwed there and didn't have much going on. Um, all right, well, same thing as last time. I'm going to bring, again, even though he has a lot of artifacts, well, I don't think he has, this version probably does not, so I'll take those out. I don't think he's an Oath deck, or I would have seen those. We may have Fast Bond, so I'll probably leave in a couple of those. Um, might like the other Eidolon. See, if he's a Young Pyromancer thing, I definitely want that. Um... Didn't really get to see enough of what he's doing here, but um, I think I like leaving in maybe one of these. Add in another Eidolon. Windborn Muse might be good there too. Um, let's wait and see what he's got. I think I'll submit on that there. Yeah, I mean, it's possible he just um, wasn't paying attention to what um, Spirit of the Labyrinth actually does. I don't know. Um, I, I'm not sure a lot of people are playing it. I, I, I have seen it in one of the Blue Angels lists um, that I actually played against in the queues a couple of weeks ago. And I like it there because they can hold up mana for um, a Restoration Angel, and they can also play Fact of Fiction at that same uh, CMC. Um, they have a lot of flash, so uh, playing Fact of Fiction in Spirit of the Labyrinth um, works really well um, in that. Um, let's see. Not a lot of action here, but this hand is okay if he is like a Pyromancer deck and he doesn't have... Um, have it on turn one because I'll have spell snare up. If he does have it on turn one, this hand is uh, not going very <laughs> and it places very fast here. So um, really leaning on those spell snares. Oh, okay, yeah, that's bad news. He did have a mox. So if he is um, either Grixis control, maybe with a dark confidant or something like that, he's gonna have it off um, before I can snare it which is unfortunate that's kind of the plus and like this is a spell that should be really good in vintage because there are a ton of um uh, just a ton of decks and i don't know what he's doing with these mox opals all the time um i'll play this because i don't know if he might have bust out a wasteland or a strip or something um it's a spell that a spell center should be good because it hits so many of the key spells in the format um whereas I, again it's people say legacy is a one drop format and modern's a two drop format well, what's vintage i don't know four drop format in some ways but really the the land mocks uh, you know you you're encouraged to play a lot of two drops and um that's the only problem with it is that the reason you're encouraged to play those two drops is you can usually dump them out on turn one. Um, so again, it hits a lot of the spells that people are playing, but um, it may not hit them in time. But anyways, it, it's a live spell. Well, that's, that's an interesting keep there from him. I did not have a third artifact to turn the Mox Opal on. I'm going to go ahead and play that. I'm going to just keep, just play out the fetch lands, um, because if he is holding a land in hand, it's possible that it is a wastelander strip. Now, again, I don't know. Um, all I saw was a Valk in game one. So I really don't know. He could he could be uh, Rug Delver even. No, Mana Vault again. Okay. All right. Well, now his Mox Opal is on. So he's got um, could cast anything with one colored and three here. He's got a Time Vault. 
All right, we're going to get a tundra and a spell snare that. All right, time vault down. All right, so he let his other mana empty from the pool. All right, so I can play. <clears throat> um, I could play an idol on here. I could play Geist, or I could just hold Spell Snare up again. Um, I'm not under any pressure. Um, I guess what is he? What am I gonna? What am I gonna have a spell snare for? That was probably the best target in his deck um, for spell snare. Um, I think I just go ahead and play the Geist out here. Yeah, this guy really plays a ton of artifact mana, and um, uh, let's see, get a tundra, a blue, white, blue for the Geist. No cavern this time, so he certainly could force it. Oh, he's going to pyroblast it. I'll do lightning bolt me? Interesting. All right. Yeah, see, now I'm feeling like maybe it's some kind of big mana rug delver, but I, I just don't know. It's odd. Would have made more sense there if he had pyroblasted it. I think it would have grokked his deck a little more. Um, Mox Jet. Green, red, black. Wheel of Fortune. All right. That's... Well, it drew me into um, Force of Will. That's all right. If I can survive the turn, I definitely should play the idol on next turn, I guess. Um... What did he discard? Galve Blast, Fire Blast. So this is kind of like a burn deck of some sort. Like maybe a counter burn deck. It just has a lot of artifact mana. Fire Blast. Okay. What is that? It's a vintage master's art. Fire Blast. That's interesting. It's Galve Blasting me. This guy. <laughs> Look at this guy. All right. Um, yeah, good. That's going to take me to 11. Might just burn me out after all here. Doesn't have to. Um, okay. There's a Spirit of Labyrinth. All right, well, one way or the other, let's see. I'm going to swing in first. Takes him to 12. Let's see, so next turn he would be to 6. Um, let's see, I could Ancestral myself here and then play a Spirit of the Labyrinth. Um, if I drew in another land, I could still play Eidolon of Rhetoric. I've got plenty of stuff to discard here. I could always hold up Flusterstorm. I'm going to start with that. Then drawn to some artifact mana really let me explode a bit here. 
Oh, I got a little. Let's see, there's a Mox Jet. Just gonna cast that. Would've been nice to hit a land drop too. I can certainly discard the Unburial Rites. <laughs> um, I could Time Walk here. That seems pretty good. Let's see if Time Walk resolves. Um, let's see, blue, black. Time Walk holding up the Fluster Storm. All right, Time Walk resolved. So I'm going to pass and discard on Burial Rites. And we draw. There's a Mox Sapphire. I'm going to play that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and swing. Six, and he would be dead next turn. So the question is, I can run one of these hate bears out. I could run the Eidolon. I could run two, but I don't really think I need two. So run the Eidolon out and just hold up. So he's not going to be able to do two things in that turn anyways then. So I put two. Right. It's going to cast a divining top. Okay. And he will not be able to cast anything else. <laughs> so he can uh, top here, see if he digs himself out of it or not. Well, guys, doing what I wanted to do there, closing out game quickly. Yeah, I'm a little leery of having four of these. I seem to be drawing them all the bloody time. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you know, pitch them to Forrest there. But, uh, all right. Oh, that's going to do it for that game. So, all right. Um, got there uh, this time. And uh, join me for another match shortly. Love playing Standard on Magic Online? Check out Academy Standard Bot in the Magic Online Classifieds for Standard Singles. Hey everyone, it's Chris, MTGO's Rex Dart, and we're playing the uh, Blue White Spirit deck here. Um, I'm going to play um, this hand, um, demonstrates some of the awkwardness of these three drops. Um, I can. Uh, I can play Geist to St. Craft on turn one, which I think is just going to end up being fine. Um, then next turn I can DT for something. I'm wasting one of the mana from my Lotus, but um, so be it. The alternative is to just play something. Um, I can DT for one of my two drops if I thought that was going to be relevant. All right, my opponent mold to six and kept that. So like I said, that's the other play is DT for you know Spirit of the Labyrinth or something like that. But um, I'm fine just getting guys to St. Traff, putting him on a clock, and then have Demonic Tutor for next turn. So Alright, so I get blue, 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 white. All right, we'll see if Geist resolves. It will not. Forcible Exile and a Swan Song, huh? So I feel like if he has Swan Song main deck, that he is Oath. But 
if he is Oath, why does he care if I resolve a Geist of St. Traft? As he thinks that's too big for. Now there's a Kataki. I think I'll just run the Kataki out this turn. Um, He's going to vamp. Okay. Probably should have waited until the next turn. <laughs> it just threw me off that he wanted to counter that Geist. Like, if he had Oath, why is he countering that Geist? See if he, if he if he if he just dumps oath now, then then I really should have waited in the next turn so I could have DP'd for um, the um, uh, the the guy that removes oath. But um, um, he's going to second. No, okay, that's interesting. He's not dropping anything. Maybe storm. Yeah, he could be storm. Wouldn't really matter there. Um, He certainly wouldn't want to drop any of his artifact mana. Um, anyways, since he's Storm, he saves it for Storm count. Um, so anyways, yeah, I can DT for Force of Will here. Um, just have it to run off this Kira. Um, I can play out the Kira, but I'm just not getting the feel. Uh, yeah. So what has he got? Four cards in hand? Yeah, I don't think I need a DT here. I think I'm going to go ahead and run the Kira out. Get another Tundra. And then next turn I can DT and cast Spirit of the Labyrinth same turn which would probably be reasonable if he's um storm he's gonna have card draw that that would shut down okay we're on bug so straight bug control wouldn't play okay here's the oath okay All right, so I definitely have to DT um, for, um, I think just the guy that removes is what makes the most sense. Unfortunately, I do not have a Cavern of Souls. I cannot be sure that it will resolve. So definitely getting Kami of Ancient Law here. So get Time Walk to just hit him again. I'm not going to hit him. Um, well, it's almost hitting him to enough where he couldn't Grizzle Brand, but he could still get the thing out. Um, and it's sitting there like a giant flying lifelinker. I don't need that. Uh, so we're going to definitely get the Kami. All right, we're going to fetch. Up another tundra. All right. Well, that's good. I guess I can wait until the end of his turn to actually. No, I can't do it. He triggers off his upkeep, doesn't he? Yeah. Okay, so do it now.
and he's going to brainstorm. Again, one of the reasons I like uh, Spirit of the Labyrinth, uh, certainly against any kind of combo decks in the control decks that need to see a lot of their deck, um, it just um, it not only shuts off their actual card drawing, there's value just in that, but it also shuts off their ability to sort of rebuild or find their situational cards. Um, so, I mean, it, it's not only good against uh, the Grizzle brand part, it's good against, um, you know, every other aspect. All right, well, he has a blue and a black open here. What is he going to play? Demonic Tutor. All right. Doesn't have any artifact, man. He could be holding one. Not sure what I would go for in his place. Time walk. Well, <laughs> maybe that's good enough. Let's uh, let's attack first here. Put him down to four. All right, and he'll have to counter that if he has it. Otherwise, that would be game. Up, oh, he says he clicked the wrong card. I wonder what he clicked. Okay, was that just now? No, it was way back when I did something else. I'm not sure. All right, so he's gonna force that exiling. Um, mental misstep and leaves him with one card. Oath would not get there. Of course, he would have known that, so, all right. All right, so I know I'm going to want the other Kami. Um, you take out the Katakis. I'll bring in the other Eidolon. And I'm going to want to bring in some more of this other stuff here. Um, let's see. I don't really need the gifts package here. I'll keep gifts, but I'll take out the other two. Um, let's get the spell snares. Um, no misstep. And I guess I would kind of like the vindicate also. I'd have to cut two things here. To get that, um, I don't know. Maybe the Eidolon's not as good. Um, I'll cut that gifts. Bring in the. I want to bring in the Vindicate Four. I'm not sure. I want to keep in the swords. It's not really that good of an answer to Grizzlebrand. It's better to just stop it from going off. So I'll I'll bring in that. I'll do it that way. I'll just make sure my blue count's still high enough. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we're rocking it there. I wonder what it was he misclicked. I did not um, see it happen at 118. All right, well, this isn't bad. Um, well, the problem, of course, is I can't cast any of these spells unless I rip a land. Um, if I rip any land, like if, if I had something to cast this portent, this wouldn't be bad. Um, what are my odds of drawing a colored land? But one in three. Um, yeah, I mean, otherwise, it has force of will. But if he has turn, I'm not. I need a land to, to be able to cast the spell snare or this kami in order to get me there. So I think I have to mulligan this. Um, oh jeez, this one is. I feel like this. I can't really mulligan this though. Um, I don't want to go to five since he kept at seven. But I mean, this can't. This is just worse than the first hand because it doesn't have the force essentially. Um, 
all I really have going for me in this hand is the strip mine. Um, and I, I don't think going to five is going to be any better, so I'm just going to hopefully get lucky, rip a uh, blue land. Forbidden Orchard. Oh, is he just going to have the... Uh, Oh, he's going to ponder. Okay. Yeah, anything with uh, anything with blue here be nice. Uh, demonic tutor. So let's see, I could get a demonic tutor for Lotus. Um, but then what am I gonna really do with the Lotus? I think I wanna strip mine him. Ugh, boy, I don't know. That's a tough call. Demonic tutor for um, just a blue land, I guess. That would be something. Yeah, well, all right. Um, Because my other option is to strip mine the Forbidden Orchard. All right, so. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's terrible as it seems that I have to, well, I could DT for Cavern. That way I could make sure that Cami resolves. Um, the only problem there is that I can't cast the Spell Snare or the Portent. I can also DT here for Mox Jet, or sorry, Mox Sapphire, so that I could leave Spell Snare up or cast the Portent this turn. Um, but then that has the problem of leaving me unable to cast Cami. So... I think I want to go for the Cavern of Souls so that I can cast the Cami, although that's um, leaving me unable to cast Geist also. Yeah, I think I just want... Ugh. You know, I'm going to get the Mox, and I can cast Portent off it next turn and hopefully find something um, if I need to, but that way I leave the Spell Snare up. So let's do that. Let's get the Mox Sapphire. Mana Vault. All right. Got a lot of mana here. He could um, drop a Jace. That would be pretty nasty for me. Oh, what is he going to do for five here? Yeah, he's going to cast the Jace. Now, I do have pressure here, so it's not... Totally awesome for him. Like he'd have to bounce something just for it to. No, oh, okay, yeah, you can zero. That's right. Now, there's a little bit of tension in there, having a deck with Chase and um, also giving me attackers. All right, a land. That's what I wanted. So let's see. Um, cast the Geist here, um, or I can cast the um, Portent. Um, I think I'll cast the Portent. Could also have portented him. <laughs> um, I 
let's see, Geist, Mental Misstep, Rainforest, okay. Um, let's see, I'll put that on top. And that, I'll be happy to draw the Mental Misstep, I think. And then I'll shuffle after that. So these guys are going to swing at Jace. And then I can strip. He's got green off of that. So if I'm going to strip anything, I think I strip the C. Makes the most sense. So draw the misstep, and then I need to remember to shuffle with the delta for my turn. Is that a lose life? It deals one damage, but he controls it, so I don't get to redirect it to Jace. Ancestral Recall, we're going to misstep that. All right, now he's going to activate Jace. He's got another Forbidden Orchard. Oh, and a Mox Jet. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if, I've got good protection here. If he goes for an Oath, um, I can Spell Snare it. Okay, and you remember to Shuffle. Get a Tundra. And the Spirit of the Labyrinth, that's pretty good. All right, so shoot one of these at Jace, the other two at him. Okay. All right, Jace down. And then cast Spirit here, leave the Spell Snare up. Oh, and he's going to, possibly he's going to brainstorm in response. He's going to swan song that. Interesting. All right. And then was he going to rob decay the bird? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. He's down to one card in hand. wonder if it's another Jace. That would make sense um, for why he would um, be so worried about that Spear of the Labyrinth. No? Okay. Oh, is he going to Toxic Deluge all these spirits away? Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, I had uh, plenty of preparation for Oath there, um, and um, that paid off. So, um, join me for um, one last match.
Do you love to play Magic Online but have a tight budget? Check out MTG Academy's Academy Budget Bot in the Magic Online Classifieds. All cards in stock are cheaper than one event ticket. Hey everybody, it's Chris, MTGO's Rec Start, and um, we're still battling up with the uh, Spirits deck here. Um, <clears throat> this hand looks okay. Um, I'm on the play, so this disruption, if it's relevant, will be good. Um, <laughs> that's kind of the... I'd rather have Spirit of the Labyrinth than probably any of these, but um, that's all right. Um, we're going to go ahead and keep it. And we're going to lead on the Flooded Strand. That is the safest. I don't think people play Stifle in uh, Vintage. I have not seen one that plays it. Get Taxi and Probe, huh? Hmm. All right. Well, we are SOL if he um, <laughs> if he uh, runs out a, uh, a goblin char belcher here. Could also be Storm, but I am two turns away from being able to cast that. Could be Blue Red Delver also with Cataxian Probe. I always kind of leap to the conclusion of a combo deck, but not necessarily the case. Time Walk, that's a good one there. All right, let him develop his board a little bit here. And he does, so... Yeah, there's the young Pyromancer, all right. And he's going to preordain. I'm going to go ahead and swords that um, before he draws. If he has misstep, he has misstep. So be it. So I'm going to have to get um, a tundra here. Oh, he's going to gush in response, all right. Let's see if he draws into a mental misstep. Got a lot of cards in hand, although two of them are islands, so... All right, he's going to get two elementals out of that. That's still a pretty good deal for him. Souls main spirit. All right, we got Kataki down. Kataki will not stay in post board just to shut off uh, Mox Rubies. All right, see if he maybe bolts it, or all right, it's just gonna. Okay, he's gonna swing in with an elemental. That is fine. There's another Kataki, huh? Okay. Um. All right, so I could play the idol on here. Um. He won't be able to bolt that. 
so it's probably pretty safe. Um, or I could play Kira first before I played that, but I don't even know if that's necessary here. Let's go ahead and... Uh, All right, it's going to stem the tide from elementals for the moment. And he's going to pay for the Mox Ruby again. Just let the Ruby pay for itself. And he's got another Pyromancer there. Okay. Geist. <clears throat> I think I want to play Kira here. swing in with the Eidolon or I can just kind of hold it back here. Um, so you technically, he has four power if you wanted to throw everything in front of this, but um, the one point of damage is not that big a deal here. And scroll. Make another elemental. I would love to see uh, <laughs> my gifts package here. Now he's going to ancestral. And Misty. Really what I want there. Light blue. Blue. What's he going to do here? He's got four. He could change. I just can play another Pyromancer. He's going to really flood the board with uh, elementals here. So I'm pretty desperately need something to go over the top with here. Um, the guy can. Well, I can factor fiction. That's going to be good. I will wait until his turn to do that. Or I can do it now if he casts a spell on my end step. Since I know he will not be able to cast another. All right, he's going to cycle an ice. Um, fiction. Let's see. He's thinking about the piles there.
I think I will take the DT and the lands. I could end up just hard casting Elishnorn <laughs> um, if I make it that long. Um, I may not. Let's see, twos. Yeah, I'll take pile one. There's a Delver. <clears throat> All right. Um, <laughs> I think there's a very good chance that that DT does not resolve. Um, unless I can somehow bait him into casting some additional spell. I just don't know how... I'm going to get there. Let's see, what is he at? Six guys here. So he'd be at eight. If I did cast a spell, I can block safely one, two, three, four of them. So I'd still be taking one, two, three, four. He probably wouldn't attack the Pyromancers. Six, seven, nine. Yeah, God, that sucks. But I kind of have to have DT resolve here at this point. Um, if he lets me get it, then I will um, do it. But uh, so this thing, so I'm going to have to lose a life here and get a underground C. Yeah, he should counter this. Um, I know normally you, yeah, there we go. Um, a lot of times you think, oh, I'll wait and counter the thing he DTs for, but um, here he was going to do it anyways just to make more elemental tokens, if nothing else. Uh, and of course he knows I have Cavern of Souls, so I can potentially resolve whatever I draw. Well, if I can rip Elishnorn off the top, <laughs> I'm in good shape. One time, Elishnorn off the top. <clears throat> All right, we can now at least attack with the insect. But there's no point just throwing some of those in. He's really got to wait and do it when he has an alpha strike, so... Um, this makes sense here to just attack with that. I can, of course, block with Kira. Um, or do I want to keep Kira around? Well, do I want to block and trade there? I don't think I need to here. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, it was unfortunate him having three pyromancers on that draw, but um, so be it. So now he has 10, 14. So I think he can probably get me. Can he get me on the next thing? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I think yeah, he would have me if I had to fetch there. Um, Elishnorn. 
Oh, boo! <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that does it. Um, I could have, yeah, I could have tried to bait him there with something, but. All right, he's got enough guys now. I'm just going to concede. Um, so let's see. What do I want to bring in against that? Um, I think definitely the Windborn Muse coming in. Um, Katakis are coming out. I um, don't really like the Kamis either. Bring in all the Counter Magic. Um, let's see the additional Eidolon. I think that looks good there. And we'll submit. <clears throat> really wish I could have ripped Elish Norn for you guys. That would have been pretty epic. Um, all right. Well, let's see. Yeah, this hand <clears throat> really needs a mox or something here. Um, it's got nothing going. I'm going to mulligan it. Uh, this one's okay. I get turn on Spear of the Labyrinth. He'll have mental misstep up if he tries to bolt it or something. Um, we'll keep it. All right, so I'll pull, um, I'll pull a basic island here with this delta and the pearl. That resolves. All right, no turn on Pyromancer from him. Not that I have much in the way of action going here either, unfortunately. Um, yep, all right. And there's another Pyromancer. Factor Fiction, huh? All right. Well, if I swing and he has, what could he have at instant speed? That's what I'm trying to think here. If he has anything that he could cast that's not a counter spell that would create a token at instant speed. Like it have to be like gut shot or something. But if he had gut shot, he'd just gut shot this. He doesn't it doesn't matter. He can't play like a taxi and probe here. Um I don't know, I think I'm gonna leave the spirit in play anyways. Um you know, maybe I cast factor fiction now while he's tapped out. All right, and cast it at his end of turn. You're going to draw. Give, I don't play. What did he play? Um, I feel like if I cast Factor Fiction now, it's probably getting Force of Willed and just making a guy. Um, so maybe I should have attacked first. Well, What's he going to do here with the piles? Yeah, I could use that spell snare earlier. <laughs> I 
I have cards that are good against him, but um, I do think in general the fact that I'm a bunch of little weenies on the ground, I kind of have to have some sort of alternative here. Um, let's see. Well, let's see, there's the pile with more mana, but I have mana. And there's the pile with the other factor fiction of the Geist. The Spell Snare. If I pick the Spell Snare hand, I unfortunately can't actually leave Spell Snare up. Um, because I don't have the blue mana. Uh, I think I want to get to the factor fiction, so I'm gonna I'm gonna choose that pile. Yeah, I feel like if this deck didn't have Young Pyromancer, <laughs> it is Surgical Extraction or something. Um, that is the most troublesome because I just have too many guys that don't interact well with it. You're going to swing with it? Hmm, that's interesting. Why does he want me to trade there? I'm not going to take the bait. If he if he's offering that trade, something's wrong. Or he just has another and it doesn't matter. I don't know. Oh, yeah, he's got another. Okay, what do I do here? Play Geist, I'm just play Factor Fiction again. And I could have a Spell Pierce or something, but I guess I can Mental Mist if it comes to that. Blue. I mean, didn't have a Force last time. Hmm. Want the swords and the other guy, or do I want the force and a misstep? I think I'll take that pile. Unfortunately, I'm really nowhere closer to winning here at this point. Um, this is going to set off a little stupid cascade, so I'm going to do this, and then he's going to misstep me back and make a bunch more guys. I think the only reason it matters at all is because of that fetch land. Obviously, I don't really care if he... Um, does that, but he could be able to bottom a couple, and I guess it wouldn't matter if he had the fetch land, but it's like just filtering at this point. So he's got a merchant for fire and ice. That's uh, that's a good one. All right. Well, I'm getting in trouble here. Let's see, he's going to be able to fire and ice that. I'm going to have to force it. And he's going to have so many guys. I just, yeah, I can't handle these multiple pyromancer draws all the time. I mean, even when he didn't have card drawing here. Um, to help him get to him, he just had him, you know. <laughs> Unburial rights, huh? Um, <laughs> yeah. 
if I had a gifts or something here. Right? Mm, nothing I can uh, write for. I mean, play the Geist, and then I pretty much am left with. Um, Having to force the um, fire and ice once he's actually able to cast the thing. And I'm in pretty quick danger of getting overrun here. Once again, um, Elish Norn off the top <laughs> would do it. If I'd managed to hit one off any of those factor fictions, that would have also been nice. Alright, so he's fire. Targeting spirit for one and me for one. So I'm going to have to go to nine to counter this. Um, maybe I should just play more Elish Norns. How the heck am I getting to seven mana all the time in this matchup? <laughs> Certainly something going on. I'm just going to force back, huh? All right, and you got it. Now you can play your gush that you've been waiting for all game, which is completely irrelevant. Oh, there's your ancestral recall. <laughs> I like having Spirit of the Labyrinth. So many people are just like, I'm going to counter things and draw cards. I'm like, I'm going to not <laughs> let you draw cards or counter things. Yeah, this is completely pointless. I mean, he has total overkill at this point. There's no need to do all this crap. Because, um, I mean, if I did have something to deal with him, I mean, this is just ridiculous. Like, like, um, I mean, I guess maybe he just wants to find some counter magic, but, you know. Well, let's see, I can block with the guys here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I pretty much have to. Um... Well, then I'm not going to be able to... Yeah, I'm not even going to be able to cast the Elish Norn if I rip it, because I'll be at... Hey, watch, this is when I'll draw it. All right, all right. Nope. <laughs> Idle on. Okay, all right. So, yeah, the multiple Pyromancers, both games. I'm, whatever, I can't... I have cards to deal with that, but um, this wasn't coming up. Maybe, um, since I am playing black... Um, I should place, I don't know, Engineered Plague or something in the sideboard, possibly. I'll have to, to ruminate about that because um, it, clearly that's, uh, again, the, the Spirit of Labyrinth is good against him, but, um, you know, he can still slowly build this stuff up, and I can't really beat through this. So I'm um, going to have to come up with some plan for, for that deck, but... Um, well, anyways, we'll talk a look at it. If you have some ideas, feel free to share them with me in the comments. So that's going to do it for today, and I appreciate joining me, and uh, see you next time.